This video is part one of a two-part Microsoft Loop for Beginners tutorial series. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about what Microsoft Loop is, then I'm going to talk about how you can access it, create a workspace in it, add pages to your workspace, and then add various content elements to your pages, including headers, dividers, lists, and even tables. Now, Microsoft Loop is a new collaboration app that was released by Microsoft that is designed to change the way that you create and manage content with your colleagues and even your friends. Now, Microsoft Loop is comprised of three main components, and the first one are Loop workspaces. Now, workspaces are shared spaces that you can create to group content pertaining to a specific topic. Now you might create a workspace to manage a project or you could even create a loop workspace to manage your departmental policies and procedures. Now the second major component of Microsoft Loop are pages. Now a workspace can have one or many pages and pages are blank canvases that you can use to create and store content of any variety. Now a loop component is a portable piece of content that you can declare and share across other Microsoft 365 apps and services. Now when you declare content as a loop component, and you use it in the different apps and services, what's really cool is that the content will actually stay in sync irrespective of where it's being updated. Now that we have a good understanding of what Microsoft Loop is, let's dive in and let's learn how to use it. All right, now the first thing you'll want to do is open your browser and navigate to loop.cloud.microsoft. Next, you'll want to sign in with your Microsoft account. To do this, you'll want to click sign in and then enter your credentials. And once you've signed in, you will end up here on the Loop landing page. Now on this landing page, the first thing that you will see is a list of workspaces that you have access to. Now you can see here four tiles. Each of these represents a workspace that I've either created or that has been shared with me. And if I wanted to access one of these, I could simply click on the tile. Now on this landing page, you can also click on the recent components and pages link. And this will display a list of pages that you've recently accessed. It will also display the list of pages that have been shared with you and it will even display the standalone loop components that have been shared with you from other Microsoft 365 apps. Now in this tutorial, we will start off by creating a brand new workspace. Now to do this, you wanna click on the create new workspace button. Next, you'll want to enter a name for your workspace. Next, you can also give your workspace an icon just to add some style and flair to it. Now to do this, click on the icon button and this will display a list of emojis that you can select from. Next, you can choose to share your workspace with your colleagues. Now I will go ahead and place my cursor in this field and I will start to type my colleague Diego's name and I will select him here. And it's important to note that if you don't share your workspace at the time of creation, you can always do that later. Next, I'll click continue. Now what Loop will also do is it will look at the name of your workspace and it will scour through all of the different files that you have access to across the Microsoft 365 suite of products and it will surface them here. If you find a document or a file that you would like to include in your workspace, you can simply click on it and it will add it to your workspace. And next I'll go ahead and click create workspace. And you can see here that my workspace was created. Now we'll start off with a quick overview of the general navigation of Microsoft Loop. Now first, on the left-hand side of your screen, you have what is called the sidebar. Now the sidebar is how you get around in Microsoft Loop. Here you can do things like search, you can view any places that you have been tagged in Microsoft Loop workspaces, pages, or components, and you can view the current workspace that you are in and the content that exists inside of that workspace. Now here you can easily switch between your workspaces by clicking on the switcher, and here you can just select which workspace you would like to move to. 
Now, as discussed earlier in the tutorial, loop workspaces consist of pages. Now you can see here that I've added a few additional pages to this particular workspace and I can easily switch between them by simply clicking on their name in the sidebar. Now on the right hand side of your screen, you can see the share button. Clicking on the share button is going to bring up the share menu and from here you can add and remove users from a workspace. You can share the link to the page that you're currently working on or you can convert a page that you're working on to a loop component, which we'll talk about later in the tutorial. And the last part of the interface is the page canvas. Now the page canvas is where you actually come to add content to your loop workspaces. All right, now when you are getting started with your loop pages, you have two options. You can build out pages from scratch, now these pages are essentially blank canvases for you to customize to meet your specific needs, or you can start from one of the many templates that Microsoft offers out of the box. Now when you have a blank page, you will see at the bottom of your screen some template tiles. Now if you want to preview one of these templates, you can just go ahead and click on a tile. Now I'll select this project brief tile and you can see here that doing that automatically applied that template to the page and it also updated the page title. Now if you wanted to have some further guidance on how to use this template, you can simply check this option here and it will also populate the template with some sample content. Now you can click on the template gallery to view the full list of templates that are available. And as you can see here at the time of recording this video, there were approximately 24 templates available out of the box. Now for the purposes of this video, we're going to start from scratch. So I will add a new page by clicking on the add a page or link button and then selecting this option here. And that has added a new page. Now I will go ahead and also delete this project brief by simply right clicking on it, clicking on the delete button, and you can see here that it has been deleted. All right, now the first thing you want to do when building out your pages is give the page a title. Now to do that, place your cursor in the title field and enter your title text. You can see here that I have entered my title. Now the next thing that I recommend doing is adding a cover image. Now you don't have to do this, but it is a nice way to add some flair to your pages. Now you can see here this button that reads add cover. You wanna go ahead and click on it and this will allow you to either select one of the recommended cover images or you can even search for stock images. I will select this option here and you can see here that you can preview these by simply clicking on them. I'll go ahead and click add and you can see that my cover image has been added. Now you can also add an icon to your pages to give them some additional flair. To do that, simply click the add icon button and this will bring up the emoji picker. Now I'll go ahead and select this option here and you can see that I've added my icon. Now when working with pages, if you place your cursor anywhere on the canvas, you are, you're going to notice this pop-up that reads press forward slash to insert. Now I will type forward slash and what this is going to do is it will bring up the element menu. Now this menu will display a list of all of the different content elements or blocks that you can add to your pages. Now we're going to work through adding several of these different content blocks so that you can see what is available and how they work. Now the first thing that I will do is I will add a header to my page so that I can start to build out my content in a structured and organized manner. Now, specifically, I will scroll down and under the text styles option, I will select collapsible heading one. Now, once I've selected this, you can see here that it is prompting me to add some text. Now I've gone ahead and added two emojis to this header and next I will type in my text here and you can see that I now have a header. Now I've placed my cursor at the end of the header and I will press enter and now I can start to add in some text or other content that will be nested under this collapsible header. 
All right, now you can see that I've added some text under my collapsible header. Now this text is just the paragraph text element type and you don't have to actually type the forward slash and access this. You can simply place your cursor anywhere on the page and you can start to add your text. Now you'll see here this little arrow to the left of the header. This is what you can use to expand and collapse the section. And a little tip, you can also just right click on it and you can see here this expand collapse menu. Here you have the option to either expand and collapse all sections or an individual section. And you can even see the keyboard shortcuts. Now I'll go ahead and click collapse. And you can see here that the text has now been hidden. And if I go ahead and press shift alt plus, you can see that I can simply expand the selection. Now the next element that we'll add to our page is a divider. Now I will type forward slash and I will select this divider option here. Now you can see that it adds a divider line between the content. Now you don't have to use this, but I like to use these dividers to help break my page into different sections. And it's important to note that I did just press enter between my collapsible heading and the divider to make sure that the divider itself wasn't nested in the collapsible heading. All right, now I've added my next collapsible section and what I'm going to do now is I will add another collapsible section, but this time I'm going to select the heading to style. Now I'll select this option here and you'll see that it now allows me to add further nested collapsible sections. Now I'm going to use this to add an in scope section to capture all of the items that are in scope for this project. And I'll add one that will capture all of the items that are out of scope for this project. Now you can see here, I've added my collapsible heading to, and I've added some text. Now I'll press forward slash and next I'm going to add in a numbered list. Now to do that, I'm just going to select this menu option and now I can start to add text to my list. And you can see here that I have added content to the list. Now here's a tip, if you've added a numbered list or bulleted list and you want to change the style, all you need to do is select the list content. Then you wanna click on the more options button here and you wanna click into the headings and lists menu. And here you can actually change the style. You can change the list to be a heading, a collapsible heading, or you can change it from a numbered list to a bulleted list or the other way around. Now I'll go ahead and change this to a bulleted list. And you can see here that my text updates in real time. Now, if you're looking for other ways to streamline your workflows and increase your productivity, there is another Microsoft 365 app that you have to know about. That app is SharePoint Lists. Now, SharePoint Lists allow you to collect and store data in an Excel-like interface. With Lists, you can create columns and fields, you can create data collection forms, you can create calculated columns, and you can even connect your list to Microsoft Power BI. Now, if you're looking for a solid introduction to SharePoint List, I recently launched SharePoint List Fundamentals On Demand course. That course contains 37 lessons, 90 minutes of video content and three digital downloads. Now, if you are interested in learning more about that course, you can click the link in the description below. And for a limited time, you can take 20% off the cost of that course by using the promo code MSLOOP20, but you better hurry as that promo is limited to the first 50 people that sign up. Now let's get back to the video. Now, another content element that you can use in loop is the people picker. Now, anytime you have your cursor on the page, you can simply type the at symbol to bring up the people picker. Now you can see here that it will start off by displaying people and I can simply start to type and it will look for individuals whose name matches the text that I'm typing. Now I'll go ahead and select myself here. And you can see here that that adds my profile in the form of a person chip. Now, when you do this, you are also tagging individuals. So they will actually receive a notification, letting them know that they've been tagged in a loop page. Now I will type at, and I will search for another individual and I'll go ahead and select 
that individual. Now you'll notice in this case, it did not display Adele as the person chip. And that is because Adele does not have permission to access this workspace. Now you can choose to grant access directly from the chip by simply clicking on it. That's going to bring up the share menu. And if you want to grant that user access to the workspace, you can simply click share and notify and they'll have access to this page. All right, now I've added my next section and this time I'm going to demonstrate how you can use tables in loop pages. Now I've brought up the content picker and here I will select table. And you can see here that that adds a two by two table to my page. Now, the first thing that I will do with my table is I will add an additional column. Now to add a new column, you simply want to place your cursor at the end of an existing column and that will bring up this plus sign. To add the column, simply click on it. And you can see here that my columns have been added. Now to give these columns names, you want to simply click on the drop down and you want to click on the rename option and that will allow you to populate the column titles. Now you can see here, I've named my three columns and if I click into the first row, you'll notice that they all appear to be text columns. Now, if you want to change a column type, what you want to do is again, click on the drop down to the right of the column that you would like to change. And here you wanna select this option that says change column type. And you can see that you can set your columns to text, number, date, person, vote, or labels. Now labels are essentially drop down lists that you can add into your tables. Now you can see once I click on this, I can give this group a label. So I will call this milestone status. And then I can go ahead and add in my options. Now you can see here, I've set my options to planned, in progress and completed. I'll go ahead and click save. And you can see that the actual column header updated to reflect that this is now a label. And when I click into the cell, you can see here that I can choose from one of these predefined values, or I can even add additional values. Now, if you wanted to modify these options, you can click on this pencil icon and here you can rename them and you can even change the color. Next, I'll go ahead and change this column type to a date type. Now, again, to do that, click on the drop down, click on change column type and select date. And now when you click into this column, it will display the date picker. Now, when you are working with your tables, if you would like to add new rows, you can simply click on the new button and that will add additional rows here. And you'll notice that if you select a particular row, you can either delete it or you can reposition it by simply clicking, dragging the row into the desired position and releasing your mouse. Now, when working with tables, by default, you will be working in the tabular view. Now, you can also enter and update your table data in a detailed view. Now, to do that, hover your cursor over any of these rows and you'll see this little arrow here. And as I hover my cursor over it, you can see this text that reads open detail view. I'll go ahead and click on it. And what this does is this actually brings up a form view where you can come to add data, update data, or even add fields to your table. Now I'll go ahead and enter a new milestone here and I can simply click into each field and I can select my values here. And if I wanted to add an additional field, again, I can just click on this add field button and here I can add additional fields to my table. Now in this detail view, you can also add notes, comments, or any related content. And that is going to store the data on this particular row record. So I'll just go ahead and type, this is some text and I will X out of here. And now if I click back into the detailed view, you can see that additional context has been saved. Now, when working with tables, you also have additional options such as filtering and sorting. Now to sort, you can simply hover your cursor over the column that you would like to sort by. And you can see here the sort ascending and descending option. I'll go ahead and click on that. And you can see that my table has been sorted. And you'll also see here that a sort condition has been applied. Now you can click on this button to either remove the sort or to redefine a new sort condition. Now I'll go ahead and change this to ascending. And you can see here that the sort condition has updated. 
Now you can also filter your table by clicking on the filter button and this will bring up the filter definition pane. Now, if I wanted to filter my table to display only those milestones that are in the plan state, I can select my column milestone status. I can set my condition to is, and then I can go ahead and select planned. Next, I can click apply and my table has now been filtered. Now, when you're working with these tables, you also have the option to expand the table to be larger and maximize the length of your screen, or you can collapse it in order to keep it more condensed. And if you click on the more options button, you have some options to change the actual appearance of your table. And here you can also hide and show column. Now, the last thing that I will demonstrate with tables is that you do have an option to switch from the tabular view to a board view. Now to do this, click on this view button here and you can see the option to switch it to a board view. I'll go ahead and select this. And what it will do is display your data in this Kanban board view. And here you can actually drag your records into the different groupings that have been created on your board. Now by default, when working with the board view, it will look for a label type column to serve as your actual groupings here. So you can see that I have one label column that was called milestone status. And as a result, it is displaying my data grouped by the respective statuses. Now, really important note, as we're gonna see later in the tutorial, there are pre-built templated content elements that exist in loop that you can use. And those are basically pre-configured tables that Microsoft has included to help expedite your content creation process. All right, now when it comes to working with tables, it's important to note that you can also export a table to Excel. Now to do this, you want to place your cursor on the element position button, as you can see here on the screen, and you want to click on it. And here you'll see this option export to Excel. I'll go ahead and click on this. You can see the message that this table data will be exported to Excel. And you can see here that the data was exported to an Excel file and it simply opens in a new browser tab. And if you look at the address bar, this will be stored in your Microsoft OneDrive account. So that's it for part one of the Microsoft Loop for Beginners tutorial series. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like. Please drop a comment below telling me what you thought. Share it with your friends and colleagues. And most importantly, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my new content. I'm Louis Acobalas. I'll see you in the next video.